The SNP's Ian Blackford infuriated common speaker Lindsay Hoyle this morning after deliberately sabotaging the Brexit trade deal debate to make the case of Scottish independence. The party's Westminster leader intervened in a debate on the Brexit trade agreement with the EU to make a point of order, a procedure usually used to highlight inaccuracies or irregularities in a Commons debate. However, Mr Blackford interrupted the Prime Minister's opening statement in the debate to promote Scottish independence. He said, it's the people of Scotland that are sovereign, and it's the people of Scotland that will determine to take them back into the European Union with independence. With just five hours to debate the Brexit trade deal and hundreds of MPs eager to speak on the subject, the remarks left Speaker Lindsay Hoyle infuriated for taking up time. Speaker Lindsay Hoyle accused the SNP leader of deliberately abusing the point of order rule to make a point unrelated to the trade deal debate. I am desperate to know what he has to say in his contribution, rather than use it up now, why doesn't he just save it so we can get others in? Mr Blackford's comments came despite already having time set aside for him in the debate to make a speech on his opinion on the EU trade deal negotiated by the government. The speaker's slapdown of Mr Blackford came on his third bogus point of order in just 10 minutes. His intervention into the Prime Minister's statement aid into debate time, meaning less MPs would be likely to get the opportunity to have their say on the Brexit agreement. At the start of the day the SNP demanded the length of debate for the trade deal be extended, warning not enough MPs would get a chance to have their say. MPs defeated the SNP's bid to extend the time available to debate the European Union Future Relationship Bill from 5 hours to 7 hours by 362 votes to 60, majority 302. Following Mr Blackford's intervention, the Prime Minister said his trade deal with the EU would benefit Scotland and accused the SNP of wanting to hand sovereignty back to Brussels. He said, restoring Mr Speaker a great British industry to the eminence that it deserves, levelling up communities across the UK, particularly and including in Scotland, where their interests in me view have been neglected for too long. So I do find it extraordinary that on the eve of this great opportunity the declared position of the Scottish National Party is to hand control is to hand control of the very waters we have just reclaimed straight back to the EU. And they plan to ensnare Scotland's fishing fleet in the dragnets of the common fisheries policy all over again.